So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to the second part of this afternoon's discussion. Um, we're very pleased to have uh, two members of the Iraqi Parliament, the Council of Representatives, uh, with us today. Uh, my colleague Sarhan Hamasaid will will moderate and will introduce the two members. Um, one one change that we'll make from the previous session is that uh, uh, questions can come directly from you without having to write them down on a piece of paper. Um, so when the time comes for the discussion, uh, uh, Sarhang will, will invite you to uh, raise your hand, introduce yourself. We'll have mics on either side of the, uh, of the room. Uh, and we're looking forward to a very good discussion. So uh, Sarhang, over to you. Well, thank, you uh, well, thank you all for staying. I know it's been a long afternoon and it's, uh, it's been raining outside. Uh, we have uh, two distinguished members from the Iraqi Six. Council of Representatives, and uh, well, one of them is Mr. Izzat Al Shabander. He is an independent uh, uh, member of, of the council from Baghdad, and uh, he has been a former member of the state of law. Uh, he uh, he has been a so two-term uh, parliamentarian. In the first term, he was a member of the debatification um, uh, committee, and the second one, uh, in the second term, he is a member uh, of the uh, members of. Affairs. Um, and uh, we also have Dr. Uh, Nada uh, um, uh, Al Jibouri. Uh, she is also a two term uh, member of the Council of Ministers, uh, sorry, uh, uh, of the Council of Representatives from 2005 to 2010 and then re elected in 2010 uh, through now. Uh, she is a physician um, and uh, she is also a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Council uh, of Representatives and uh, she is affiliated with the National uh, Dialogue uh, Front. Well, thank you uh, both uh, for being with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, we hear uh, uh, very important uh, topics uh, that from the Deputy Prime Minister in the earlier session uh, that are key questions for uh, the people outside Iraq and uh, uh, in Iraq as well. Uh, so I would try to ask you from the perspective of uh, the Council of uh, Representatives, an important institution uh, in Iraq that uh, represents the, the voice of the people and uh, exercises the checks and balances uh, on, the, on the government. So uh, right now what happens in Anbar and the security situation in Iraq is one of the dominant topics about Iraq. Uh, so my question to you as members of parliament, what is your assessment of what is happening? Why do we have uh, this difficult uh, security situation in Anbar? Why the resurgence of Al-Qaeda? So if I can start possibly with you, Dr. Nada. Thank you. Shukran. Thank you so much for the audience and uh, for your interest in the Iraqi, with the Iraqi uh, affairs. Uh, this is uh, um, the escalation of terrorism and the repercussions of uh, that is very important in Iraq. I say this is not only in Ambar. So in 2003, uh, if we look into the numbers that were issued on the people who were killed monthly because of the bombs that uh, took place. So Iraq was left without uh, any uh, security sta or secure stability um, and the army didn't find uh, a concrete way to face uh, this and after the withdrawal of uh, the, uh, the Americans the uh, intelligence was not, um, I mean was kind Kind of um, limited, and also the political uh, conflict impeded oh, um, uh, other uh, um, uh, uh, progress uh, in, in, in to pass important legislations that will support uh, national reconciliation. So the Iraqi citizen. I wasn't uh, really clear uh, about what's going to happen, especially after the withdrawal. And uh, all uh, this climate affected on also on these uh, groups of terrorism. They will find at the end of the day uh, places or incubators that ended to escalate the terrorism. Also, having these um, uh, open borders. And 
and what um, uh, and to ask uh, we ended up to uh, the escalating our uh, that we are witnessing but um, what we're witnessing today and uh, something else I would like to draw attention to and you mentioned because you only mentioned Al Qaeda um, and what uh, question was what happened to to witness this escalation of violence but uh, there's another question which is the public uh, refusal to what happened in the last years that is not related to Al Qaeda uh, um, but there is a refusal in many uh, regions when it comes to uh, legislations or um, a, a lot of issues that are taking place in the country and uh, parallel to that uh, also uh, the, um, the uh, sluggish uh, economic development affected the uh, on the Iraqi uh, society as a whole and when we listen to sectarian voices here and there also affected on the unification of Iraq. Uh, drivers of violence and instability exist in Iraq. And uh, but before I do that, I'll, uh, I want to ask uh, Mr. Uh, Shabander about also his views on and his take on the resurgence uh, of Al Qaeda and violence in Iraq. Thank you so much uh, for uh, I thank you and I thank uh, this uh, uh, good opportunity and also thank you for every listener and who everybody will uh, share this participation and um, um, uh, I would like to comment also on sectarianism before I answer this question when we talk about sectarianism it is a major problem in Iraq but it's it, it is not a, a general uh, genuine problem and uh, we and uh, we so uh, we have to, uh, how the sectarianism entered Iraq. Uh, this is a question. That, uh, there's a story behind it. So the most Islamic movements, whether Sunnis or Shias, that were dreaming where they were outside Iraq at one time to, to enter Iraq after the toppling of Saddam and to create Islamic State or uh, has failed. Uh, when they came to Iraq, they discovered that the creation of Islamic State is uh, uh, non-realistic. Uh, so uh, they had other options in front of them, either to talk about a national project that is uh, considered to be substitute to Islamic State, and it is not uh, possible as Islamic leaders or the leaders of the Muslim Islamic movements, they cannot, in, uh, during one night, to establish a national project where they they even wouldn't use these kind of national um, uh, uh, or the, um, na the the word of nationalism and they will prohibit to use these uh, terms so uh, the and de decades of pro prohibiting even this kind uh, of uh, 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 discourse and uh, they would not be able uh, they failed in creating Islamic uh, projects so they 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 had only one option talking uh, about about sectarianism and the uh, and the and they decided to say we are the protectors of Sunnis and and uh, and saying that the Shia would like to, to 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 kill Sunnis and this is not true and the le and the Shia leaders also also have witnessed some of uh, sectarianism and though they educated Shias that to to fear Sunnis as well so they will be so you witnessed they have a team so the the picture at the end that you have a, a a group of defenders of sunnis and a group of defenders of shias uh, playing on the fair uh, so they uh, created distributed this culture of fear and today it became a fact this uh, domestic issue uh, linked to a regional uh, project there were uh, to pro to embrace um, a sectarian project to rattle the region as a whole. So it is a real uh, problem in Iraq, but we will overcome this problem but because the Iraqis at the end of the day not sectarian. And when you look into the essence of Islam, it's not sectarian. Um, um, 
that uh, and and and, and uh, actually uh, the islam will uh, uh, give the muslims to uh, adopt any islamic school in the interpretation of islam and islam doesn't call them to fight each other so uh, who called himself or a sectarian is, uh, is al qaeda and what is uh, and to do uh, the acts of violence uh, whether uh, against shia or others and also mercenaries that uh, uh, that created a mechanism of revenge but i assure you that there is no one politician that uh, uh, that would say uh, um, I am with a certain sect. He just uh, he is a real uh, se sect. He just claiming that to for her, uh, to claim or to protect his own interests. So uh, uh, and I witnessed that in in many leaders uh, if he, uh, when he uh, gained the interests he would he would go away from this sectarian discourse. Um, so so, and thank you. So, if uh, the question, if you can repeat the question again. Iraq, the violence, the surge of violence, where does it come from? No. Let to just... uh, it's not uprising. Uh, Uprisal in Iraq, but based on my observation uh, to Al Qaeda and its uh, its thoughts and and history, Al Qaeda has an objective. The the Levant is, is a path to reach Iraq, and uh, what uh, Al Qaeda is doing in Yemen uh, or Libya are camps of training. But the main goal, at the end of the day, is Iraq for them. So that's why I acknowledge that uh, I recognize that the next battle between Iraq and Al Qaeda w will bring all uh, Qaeda's uh, uh, operatives from all over the world, even from Shishan and from Yemen and from Libya and from Tunisia and from Syria. Be because that will be a self-determination battle. Why, uh, why Iraq? Uh, it is a historical reason since the Wahhabi uh, thoughts it's, it's an expansion to Ibn Taymiyyah th uh, thoughts and uh, battle of Khawarij. There are historical uh, roots and, and uh, that, uh, that Iraq was a, a, a against this kind of uh, ideology or thoughts. Uh, get into is about the other sources of, uh, of violence in Iraq and uh, we have heard uh, we, we keep hearing about the political differences or the political division among the uh, among the politicians and uh, lack of uh, certain capabilities on the part of the Iraqi uh, security forces uh, do you do you think that that political division or differences is either feeding the violence or uh, impeding the development of Iraq's institution that could uh, overcome the issue of violence. It is very important when we talk about violence and sectarianism and corruption. I think there is a relationship between the th three and uh, these three topics came together in Iraq and affected the institutions and affected the, the, uh, the work of these institutions. Uh, I am not here pointing at one certain institution, but all the institutions, at the end of the day, the citizen is, is not satisfied. Um, uh, this, um, uh, w w w generally speaking, and this is a very important issue, uh, especially at this stage. And what is going on right now and, uh, during the two terms of parliament and the political blocks that are inside the parliament uh, played many roles and played important role. I think those two terms of the parliament um, considered to be 
uh, considered to be very important in the history of Iraq when we talk about democracy because it established in a very difficult and plan worked in a very difficult time. There is no doubt about it. But on the other hand, when we look into the political um, divisions and, uh, and differences um, uh, impeded uh, to have more stability for and some some uh, some of the political uh, uh, elements and i say a few uh, or, uh, and um, they um, uh, they they can they might have a direct link to violence but they are not uh, representing a huge sector but um, but they, when you look into the political uh, uh, discourse um, that sometimes that comes out that could also end to violence on the streets so so I would like to say it's very important the quality of the political discourse, the message inside the political discourse will direct the street uh, towards a certain direction. And also the terrorists, of course, will exploit these occasions when there is uh, inflammatory political speech. So these um, terrorists will exploit this chance to um, uh, conduct uh, ter terrorist actions everywhere and in increase. And when we talk in Mosul, we always talk about Ambar, but in Mosul, uh, suffering a lot of killing uh, people and journalists. So when we look into 2012, it was v uh, um, a, a tragedy uh, comparing to any place in the world. So when we, again, uh, the politi political blocks um, will, uh, will, through, uh, uh, will play an indirect role to increase the violence through uh, its political discourse. So when when we look into if we have a rationale political discourse uh, that uh, jo uh, and supporting national uh, reconciliation and and especially after the withdrawal um, um, and where the politicians were all elected. Um, so I think, again, that the national recon reconciliation, if we, uh, took place uh, clearly and transparently, will arrest, uh, will um, give higher assurance to the people, especially at this time uh, where we are witnessing new elections, in uh, parallel to combating um, terrorism. Uh, question as well, but I, and I also know that you have been. I, I'm hearing that you've been part of the uh, backdoor channel and negotiations representing uh, probably the prime minister and 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 and, and his bloc uh, in, in the, over the past year as the political uh, gridlock in Iraq has been uh, has been escalating. And uh, the, uh, we have heard we've heard from the Iraqi um, uh, citizens and the Iraqi civil society and our partners that actually the the kind of issues that dr. Nada uh, has uh, touched upon is that is if it, if it, it's fuel either fueling the dissatisfaction and the, the frustration of the public uh, because it's coming from the politicians and why aren't the politicians engaging in the Iraqi parliament and the Iraqi institutions to uh, to address these issues why why the backdoor channels and how long do we do, will we sustain those backdoor channel conversations? شكرا لك الحقيقه دوري في موضوع مد جسور تفاهم وتصالح بين الحكومه العراقيه وبين من ينافس ينافسها وهو داخل الحكومه نعم طبعا هذه مشكله ايضا احيانا انت تحتار في تشخيص هذا الشخصيه هو جزء من الحكومه او جزء من المعارضه هذه خطيئة ارتكبها ارتكبتها ارتكبها الفهم العقيم للديمقراطية عندنا في العراق ما سوت لنا معارضة كلهم يحكمون وجلهم يتحولون معارضة عند المسؤولية وكلهم في الحكومة في الامتياز طبعا هذه مسألة اوبس سوري ثانك really communication between the all sides of party is very important and it was part of my uh, my uh, vision is for Iraq it's not possible to be unified unless there is that kind of communication and bridges between the people since 2010 
since the second term for al-Maliki, there was a dialogue, a tough dialogue taking place with those people on the other side, but not publicly. And sometimes we feel that it should be done or conducted in behind closed doors. And then we can, the outcomes, we hoped that al-Maliki's government to be accepted from the other side, the Sunni side, in the same level as it is accepted by the Shias. And that's why the second term came when al-Maliki was accepted by both sides. But as a matter of fact, the Sunnis accepted the Malikis while the Shias were forced to vote for him and accept him. His Excellency Salah al-Mutluq was always postponing his problems as a leader within the Iraqi government. Instead, he used to build bridges with the within the government on his account. And I used to be with him on that path. I remember sometimes he would he would like quit or uh, be or excuse himself from any uh, uh, like a press conference whenever there's a, a huge attack against him while he's a, a member of al-Maliki's government. So efforts like that uh, kept the regime and the system cohesive. And I and I think if there was no there was it was not for this kind of effort that government wouldn't be existed at 2010. The problem is if, if you want to put titles and name things, the Iraqi, the current Iraqi government failed to achieve confidence with the other side and trust. That's why the other side uh, transferred forcefully to become an incubator to terrorism. It's all because of the misdealing from the other side, side of the government. And unfortunately, the opposition also provided kind of environment for the terrorism where they could be more active and hurt the society. And I, I really blame the leaders of the Sunnah because they couldn't distinguish themselves from the terrorists because sometimes they used to resort to them. So you end up that you try to distinguish with the speech of these leaders, whether it's pro or against Al-Qaeda. So talking about marginalization and cruelty and unfairness, we don't have it, believe it, believe me. I just want to lay this out cleanly. We have a, f a wealth in Iraq was the uh, money, the budget that set to for Rumadi's province was less than in Najaf? No. The uh, annual budget was distributed equally, and always we asked uh, the government, local government, to spend uh, these uh, money likewise the way we do in other regions or governorates without the interference of the local, uh, central government. There was kind of fear and, uh, fairness in distributing these wealth. Uh, 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 the Sunnah are in the presidency at the uh, 
the ministers' councils, uh, uh, the parliament, they all uh, had their pro portfolios. We don't have even one Sunni minister would say that uh, or accuse Al Maliki of interfering in his business. And I've heard a lot of uh, uh, people, including uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Rafi, uh, Mr. Rafi, uh, he never complained of uh, Maliki interfering in his business. Uh, so there's no marginalization, and I think the uh, corruption and the misadministration that taken place in Ramadi or Salah al -Din is also in, N in Najaf and Karbala in the south. The lack of services to the people had in the Sunnis uh, 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 provinces is as equal, maybe less also than the ones in the uh, Shiite uh, province provinces I have a lot of uh, the opportunity to uh, ask questions that they may, may have, and I'll uh, interject my uh, other questions as, uh, as we go on. Uh, we have uh, microphones, uh, so if you raise your hands and uh, if you state uh, your name and uh, your organization, uh, and uh, we'll take it from there. We have a question here. Uh, my name is... Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Nazar Janabi. Uh, my question is to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Shabender. Uh, it, it is uh, typical for uh, uh, when a politician changes party or changes uh, affiliation. It, there, are, there is one of two reasons. Either the politician feels that the party had departed from his ideology or the other way around, the politician departs from the ideology of the party. Uh, we've noticed that you had uh, uh, departed from um, uh, Prime Minister Maliki's list. And I was wondering uh, of the reason, is it the list departed from your own ideology or did you change your ideology and depart from the list? And if you can elaborate on that reasons, thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Shalanda. Uh, thank you. I think I answered uh, this question with the media when we had meeting with the media because it was a surprise that uh, I would leave the coalition, uh, the state of law coalition, and I was honored by Maliki's offer to be a member of the uh, minister's council. On, in the fourth year among that coalition, I felt that there's a, a, a change in their ideology from the announced speech, which was which reached the top in the last few years, where Mr. Al Maliki abandoned uh, uh, the uh, uh, positions and also abandoned his statements, reconciling statements he declared before. So I came to conclusion saying that my position is like a burden on the, the low state, low coalition. And the reasons why it was, uh, has to do with elections. I know Al-Maliki is not uh, sectarian, but because of the environment and the culture of sectarianism, that he found that uh, this national kind of speech limited his popularity within his environment, Shiite environment. That's why he had to adjust and resort to a more Shiite uh, speech. I cannot survive with that track. So it's either to be with him, retreating, 
or let the arena to him and say whatever he wants to say, and then I follow my own track. Good afternoon. My name is Mohammed Hannan. Um, I actually have two comments. Uh, both of you have alluded to the differences among Iraqi politicians within the parliament or the government. The question raises here is, and both of you, everybody says somebody is else's fault and blame the others. The question is here, do we have the wrong politicians? That's one comment. The other comment is about Anbar and what's happening in Iraq. What, what the rhetoric from uh, the government basically saying we're fighting uh, terrorists and we're trying to clean up the country and the region. The other side basically saying, no, we don't want the army to get into the cities. Uh, we want Maliki, Maliki to go out. And they're basically calling the Iraqi army as a sectarian army. It's not, not a national army. The question here, are they calling for secession? Do they want to be seceded, have their own region? And I think the, the government should uh, look into it from that side. Thank you. Dr. Nada. Both questions, probably the first question, I didn't really understand it quite well. Uh, we, you know, that the election in 2010 uh, was open election. It's repeating the question. They elected the right people in 2010, but those people uh, in the next four years, they're supposed to give something to the people. And this is what I'm trying to refer to. Uh, since I'm working within uh, committees, political committees within several fronts, and also the uh, commission, the five, commission of five, which is touching on the legislations that uh, comply with the demands of the constituents. And if you are, as an elected person, if you are not capable of complying with the demands of your people, then you have a problem. There's a, a gap. And that's part of the problem. These areas... <coughs> The Iraqis are equal. <coughs> uh, There's no doubt there is a shortage in uh, basic services like electricity and other, but when it, uh, but it is similar in Najaf uh, and, and other uh, similar places. But how we combat terrorism and, to, and the measurements that were taken there. So, and to preserve the dignity of of each region, and he, so, uh, so the, the so nobody is ignoring that there is terrorism, um, and the, uh, those who are committing that they are uh, outlawed people. Uh, so terrorism has no identity nor any religion. But the and the but uh, these regions being attacked by terrorism, and then on the other hand, the, uh, the their citizens being arrested, looked at. So they, I mean, they might be incubators in certain areas, or they come from Syria. But at the end of the day, who pays the price here? It is the Iraqis and the Iraqi families. And I've been working on my organization for nine years, seeing the suffer of the people. If you would like to arrest five people uh, in this process, you detain hundreds. What's going to happen to those people when they walk out from the detention? Uh, uh, centers um, and the despair they feel. Uh, 
And um, so, uh, so as you know, the process uh, we have, uh, uh, I mean, we sh there has to be a due process, for example. You have to arrest and then they is uh, detained and then uh, being trialed. Uh, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the, this is affecting uh, the lives of uh, the families. The second point is uh, um, the legislation process and, uh, um, and the, uh, how to write the bills that is affecting all the regions. And uh, there are legal procedures that has to be um, followed where the, uh, there's a certain code and law that uh, come to an end. Um, for example, there are um, families uh, um, that are related to uh, the codes and they are, uh, they are looking also for pensions and also to provide, to uh, get positions or jobs. Um, so this is we we uh, this, uh, so our laws and codes they we will not be able to pass. Um, although uh, the uh, the Council of Ministers uh, were pushing for it, but there was a political difference in the Parliament. Uh, hence, it couldn't be uh, uh, passed. So the, these are things that are related or impact different places. Salah uh, and and other and creating a gap. Um, uh, uh, between the uh, constituencies and their representatives. At the end of the day, the citizen will ask, did I uh, vote for the right representative here or not? And also, the, uh, when we talk about some of the political parties here that are, is considered to be religiously extreme, um, I think also uh, when they have a candidate, uh, they will, at the end of the day, those candidates will not serve the, the Iraqi society as a whole. As you know, there are so many religions, uh, so many groups in Iraq as a whole. So again, the national project is the only project that will be able to represent all Iraqis and bring them to um, a safe side. So. Um, so um, the uh, so when uh, um, uh, the elections is um, uh, when at the end of the day there is always a percentage of unfairness maybe um, uh, but it was conducted uh, and there was a, a, a huge. Um, uh, outcome uh, in the elections, uh, the previous elections, and now we are facing a new elections. As Mr. Azat Shabandam uh, talked, uh, decided, uh, discussed that we we don't want to uh, um, uh, repeat the mistakes uh, that was taken. Uh, it's not about uh, I mean calling our constituents to vote to a Shia or to Sunni or no. This is um, uh, and also the the media is playing a major role here to witness uh, a fair uh, elections where the Iraqi citizen can know who is running and where to vote. Um, so, uh, I focus here, I would say that uh, that also not being, uh, we have to work more on legislations, we have to also uh, work on am am amnesty in a, in, a, in, a, in a wider fashion. You cannot p punish uh, a, a huge segment uh, or certain group. Uh, when, um, and uh, 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 the, the prison at the end of the day is not the solution. You have other solutions through the civil society organizations, through the, the, the different departments. Um, uh, each one has a role. And um, and they played it already, but it wasn't kind of a comprehensive approach. And it needs more efforts. Um, uh, Mr. Shabander, about the same question, if he has a different view. If not, uh, then my question, follow up on your point. Do you think there is a, I mean, the accountability and justice law has been quoted uh, a number of times as, a, as one of the key problems of Iraq, in addition to the, uh, the terror law and uh, other things. Is there the political will in Iraq uh, now or in the near future for ending that law or changing it? And especially in your backdoor communications, no. is that is is that topic being raised? Is there political will to do it? No. Uh, 
uh, if you may, I will just answer the first question uh, uh, first. In the elections in 2005 and, 20, and 10, uh, 10, 2010 was sectarian, 100 percent. The voter was not looking uh, to vote for whoever candidate uh, based on his or her merits um, uh, credentials. Um, so, uh, so they were voting for Shia who would, uh, you know, um, a call, a talk against Sunnis and vice versa. But and and in 2005 to 2010, uh, the Sunni didn't see any improvement in their lives, and the Shias as well. Um, they were living uh, in houses made of mud, and they don't have tap water, and. Uh, they will be able to walk to uh, sacred uh, places um, freely, but the Shia didn't uh, have um, a, a, um, a quality education and how a quality housing, and the Sunnis as well. So the elections, uh, the the outcome of the elections was 35 percent, and 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 this is terrifying percentage. So that means, in other words, that 65 percent of the one who can vote, uh, they stayed at home because why? Because of mistrust and the ones who voted for before. And today we are witnessing the new elections in 2014. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid that this percentage here, I'm talking about the 65 percent, instead of uh, going out and vote for better candidates, they prefer to stay home and leave uh, the space to the same failures. And I say failures, the same same people and do the same thing. So we are uh, we're witnessing this kind of peril. 65 percent were um, uh, they were uh, uh, they were they were not uh, they didn't vote. And if we witness the same percentage, that means again those people who are uh, in the same political post will will be continue um, their work. What is kind of hopeful uh, for me that the uh, the Shia bloc uh, that was elected and voted for. On sectarian basis, dismantled what we call the national coalition, because actually it's a Shia coalition, not the national coalition. And on the other hand, the Sunni, what we call the Sunni coalition, also was dismantled. And actually, this is a good sign and a healthy sign, because this is not the national coalition; this is a Sunni coalition. So I, I, I speculate that the elections will will end up to. Uh, to create alliances among Sunnis and Shias to serve the national uh, platform at the end, not to each one protect each, uh, 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 each uh, denomination. When you talk about justice, um, uh, and accountability and debathification, uh, this was the biggest mistake we committed uh, for, uh, uh, I mean, at the uh, Iraqi society and the constitution um, uh, com committed a dire mistake. Even if you look into the words, using the words that um, uh, to and how to deal with the remnants of this party, because the constitution actually says uh, to uh, talk about debathification. How can you debath? Uh, how can you uh, root out a certain ideology? Uh, ideology? You cannot do that. Um, and with all these numbers uh, of Baathists, uh, 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 and a ma majority of them, they were actually forced to be Baathists um, uh, to find, you know, for uh, to find a job or others. Uh, so, in, uh, when I was working on this committee, uh, committee debathification, I, w uh, I always called to change this word of debathification. No, we uh, no no to. De to root out the repercussions of the Ba'ath party. It had dire implications on, on the ethics, uh, etc. So, and to have a new, a new experience um, uh, to, to de how to improve these uh, negative impacts of the party rule in the past. 
and so all the Baathists actually came and visited us and and the apologists and they and they told me we I mean we were forced to join the Baathi party uh, because for for to find a job or others so and, and we were forced I mean there was no we, we can only choose between the prison or be part or be a member of the Baath party so to and but to, uh, to, um, to, 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 to deal them in this kind of oppression, sometimes they were forced also to, 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 you know, to be extreme sometimes uh, and, or to join Al-Qaeda or other groups. So the mistreatment with the Baathis or the remnants of the previous regime uh, turned, uh, turned some of them to be enemies because they were deprived from their work, uh, so there's no other choice in front of them. It, it Change that. From your conversations, from your internal conversation or backdoor channel conversations with the other political parties ahead of the elections and for the next election, do you think there is, I mean, I, I remember seeing uh, state of law politicians saying that they have uh, lost seats in the provincial elections because they softened up uh, on, on, on changing or uh, easing up the uh, accountability and justice law. But in the backdoor conversation, is, is there a will to, 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 to change that? In my estimation, I would say yes. Uh, I be, uh, uh, and uh, there are some uh, uh, enthusiasts uh, uh, who said 10 years of punishment is enough. 10 years of punishment is enough. Uh, especially that to them it was tangible that uh, to, to implement this kind of laws and codes had a, a negative impact on the unification of the Iraqi society. In, in, in fact, um, uh, the Committee of Five will resume its work uh, to discuss uh, bills, and among them is this, uh, among the laws is this code or law where to, uh, we will be determined to working on this uh, law to protect the families, at, at least, of the Iraqi society. I know that you are the founder and the head of the Iraqi Women uh, and Future uh, Organization, an NGO that works to empower women. How, what, what is the effect of, of the, the violence and the, 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 on, uh, and the uh, political, I would say probably dysfunction in Iraq that installing the political process on the Iraqi women and their livelihoods? And when you look into the history of the 10 years, uh, we struggled a lot in the past 10 years. And the struggle or oh, the conflict, of course, uh, between the politicians also shadowed us as women politicians. And I talk here uh, on behalf of a group uh, or, or on behalf of the Iraqi political women, especially our struggle in, in the Constitution, also that the representation of women has to be no less than 25 percent um, in the parliament. And we had to struggle for that. And I was also welcoming to that from the United States um, about that and other, other. So that was initiative by a group of Iraqi women in the parliament and the provision councils um, and in the level of uh, uh, crafting laws uh, uh, that is related to elections that we have to preserve this. Um, but but um, uh, we don't see a huge women block in the parliament because of the partisan uh, direction that the um, the uh, the woman uh, parliamentarian. Uh, so in the previous parliament or uh, today, we are about 20. We run again and we win based on open lists, and uh, we also. Uh, we provide uh, with uh, uh, proposals or bills and 
uh, also we preserve everything uh, related to women, but this is not an easy path, um, um, especially uh, we, when we, 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 there has to be representation to women everywhere uh, inside the parliament. Um, there's uh, 88 women out of 325 uh, total parliamentarians, um, uh, and, and we don't, uh, um, uh, there is kind of a, a kind of a ministry of for women affairs, but we uh, uh, we believe that women can produce on the same level of men, and uh, we uh, we will not allow to the uh, men politicians to uh, compose the government on their own uh, because there was a delay. Um, uh, and in the previous elections, and and we will not uh, we we will not enter the new parliament unless there is a complete representation that is not less than 25 percent in the government on the level of the society. Yes, the Iraqi women suffered a lot, and it's the main victim here, and and harmed uh, uh, um, uh, paramountly when her son is being killed or her husband um, also, so we live in dire circumstances and one of the members uh, of her family members could be um, uh, a member to a certain group, she could be ending up suffering in one way or the other. And the Prime Minister decided to release all women from the prisons because of the clashes that took place in the society. So again, the Iraqi women suffered a lot since the, since the days of this, uh, the boycott or the siege uh, in the, uh, around 13 years, but it's a very active, it's well respected in Iraqi society, represented in, in uh, the defense, in the police, in education, uh, in the universities. Uh, so the women um, um, or the feminism is active, or the feminism ac uh, movement is active in Iraq. And now, yes, I would say we were excluded uh, from represent to be represented in the government, but we're working on that. And, um, and there are challenges we don't ignore, but nobody can reach uh, his or her goal uh, without sacrifices and, wo and work hard on that. I believe that women is not uh, the 25 percent of the society, but it's a half of the society. So I, I actually call for women to be represented by 50 percent. Come back here. Are we there? Thank you. This is Ihab Halhiti. I'm independent. I have three questions, two of them for Mr. Shabander and the third one for Ms. Nader. I would like to learn more about the similarity uh, bet uh, between al-Assad uh, using his uh, army against his people and Mr. Malik and what he's doing against any region in Iraq where there's uh, terrorism and why we uh, why there was no Geneva for Iraq as is now happening with Syria. A uh, second question is related. Is Iraq is now uh, ready to uh, give birth to a new kind of dictatorship? The third question, is the uh, Iraqi army ready up to the level to fight such a fight with people uh, has nothing or goal in life but to kill humanity. Is Mr. Malik ha does Mr. Malik has consultants that would uh, really tell him honestly about the readiness of the uh, army and the way he's supposed to fight? I th I think comparison between uh, it's unfair to compare between Assad and Maliki. Uh, Al Assad used his army, and we know the uh, circumstances and the opposition in Syria is quite different from us. The regime in Syria is different from, completely different from the Iraq 
a government. Uh, uh, Maliki was cursed by the sit-ins and the, those people there for almost 14 months, and he didn't do anything. There's a quite big difference between the two. Asset is ready to uh, set aside all the money, all the budget of Syrian government to f kill his people. Uh, Maliki cannot even control a smallest amount of money to, uh, unless the uh, you know the legislators and the uh, council of ministers and so on. Uh, 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 Al Maliki is suffering to import uh, helicopters. There was opposition against him everywhere by the Council of Ministers and the legislators and so on. There's no way to compare the two. Are there any uh, counselor, advisors that would tell the uh, Maliki what to do, what to do, what not to do? By constitutions, uh, he is like an administrator in the uh, minister's councils, and uh, he can only follow the system. The constitution gave him enough authority to be uh, uh, general in chief of uh, the Iraqi forces. He's not like Montgomery or any of these famous uh, military names, but this is what we have now and whatever is being said that the iraqi army is killing the people is not correct but uh, imprisoning or detaining people yes maybe yes we know the americans really dismantled the whole country and uh, the state collapsed with all of its establishments, and now Iraq is facing all of these challenges without having these establishments, especially the security uh, apparatus. We were well, till 2009. There was a lot of kidnapping and explosions taking place, uh, uh, imprisonment, and everything would be done uh, against an unknown party. The party, uh, the government could not really claim that they could apprehend one of the those uh, wrongdoer. But after 2010, they changed their path, and the results uh, was, as my colleague just mentioned, that uh, in order for them to apprehend five people, they would uh, uh, imprison or detain a hundred people, which affected the whole society in a way. So the security apparatus is not uh, efficient and capable to face this capable and efficient challenge from the other side, the terrorists. They are really, uh, those terrorists are capable of facing the most and advanced country in the world, like the United States. Well, what about Iraq? It just came out of all of these problems and is not really in a, a state to fight back. I think there's no way to compare between the two systems between Syria and Iraq. We have the parliament and uh, political uh, fronts uh, that would uh, uh, really reject any anything, any wrongdoing of that level. There is a problem in the measurements on how the most how to use the most effective ways to fight terrorism. Probably they're not like uh, the martyr Muhammad Kurwi. He was a leader, a very respectful one, and a friend of us. He went with a good will to fight terrorism, but he he. He was not a Shiite, he got killed. <coughs> there were Sunnis, all of them. As you know, uh, I've tried to just to mention something probably never mentioned before. Iraq is a, a big market. And the free market in Iraq is uh, the first loser in that equation. We, uh, the merchant, the people uh, conduct a business, they are the one who mostly hurt. Because we know all of these terrorist groups, they threaten and they 
impose uh, like fines on all of these uh, businesses and merchants. So they, you know, for any economy or business, in order for them to flourish, there should be a kind of st stability. Talking about different kind of uh, uh, pioneer or leaders in the country. Uh, traders in the country, they need this kind of stability. So we are demanding the for the people to be capable of protecting the people and protect themselves so that we don't lose uh, our uh, officers, renounced ones. We have a lot of uh, border areas and Al Jazeera uh, between Syria and Iraq. In Mosul, there are a lot of sacrifices that are being given, but uh, within the cities, I would say the local uh, police forces are more effective, and the people, the tribes leaders, and the people, citizens themselves, they are more effective than the uh, army. I remember doing this in uh, several regions, including Baghdad, we would go and sit with the people, where people would uh, sit together, that they are to, together to, and uh, trying to face the same enemy. And I think w everywhere in Iraq, the people and the role of the uh, the security apparatus or the military has to be clear and there has to be a unified kind of goal and they all work in a cohesive and unified way to fight terrorism this is the only frame we could work within army is to protect iraq the borders of iraq but not to get involved in with internal problems and conflicts we know from history that uh, the tribes uh, in Ambar are the ones who were the most effective in fighting uh, terrorism. Uh, even though also also in Baghdad we have the same thing. When there was the awakening groups, they are the ones who, were su who succeeded in fighting terrorism. Dr. Abbas Al-Wattan. Dr. Abbas Al-Wattan. Uh, head of the uh, uh, Iraqi Union for Peace. Mr. Shahbender, you're one of the distinguished, Iraqi distinguished politicians. Do you think the next uh, uh, elections will uh, witness change in the, these uh, political groups? And would there be a ground for the secular kind of group among those politicians? And do you see any of those uh, nominees for the next uh, elections so that we all could succeed working to together where there's a place for everything? Uh, body uh, under the flag of plurality. Uh, I just have a, a, a comment on the role of the Iraqi woman. Uh, Dr. Nada Jabouri talked about the Iraqi woman. I wished and every other Iraqi woman would wish to see uh, a, a list for Iraqi women within the coming elections. We have a lot of women that are capable of being so. There should be a special electoral list for the Iraqis. And as Mr. Shambada said, that uh, women represent half of the society. And I, th I would say women is half of the equation. My question is, now, we see a lot of uh, political uh, fronts participating in elections. We also, on the other hand, saw that uh, some of the bigger uh, fronts or coalitions are dismantled, as Mr. Shambhada just mentioned, that he left the uh, state of law coalition and went to a unified uh, list, which is representing a lot of uh, secular and uh, pronounced uh, Iraqi personality. And uh, also Mr. Saleh did this similar thing. So all of these big names of the Iraqi France and coalitions, uh, what would be their destination? Are they going to be unified, 
this is mine, this is used, Shia and Sunnis, oh, what's going to happen? Are we going to dis are they going to distance themselves from sectarianism uh, that being conducted as a speech for the last elections? And we want are we going to see in this parliament the uh, a, a real Iraqi citizen representing the interest of the Iraqis? Uh, I wish and I hope that the results of the uh, uh, coming elections to be different. The first sign we'll see that, the, as we just said, the dismantling of the uh, those big uh, fronts, the political fronts. There's a great efforts to. Uh, activate those 65 percent who refused to vote for those uh, in the last two elections and we hope to see the 65 percent voting and participating in the vote to elect a better people and and uh, there's a slogan we know whoever you elect is the one who's going to be uh, uh, running uh, in your country if you're good, someone good will run you, so you have to elect the right people. So, Dr. Saleh Mutagbin asked about the uh, uh, role of the foreign funds in the elections in Iraq. It been, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, decreased, but unfortunately there was uh, an ill-gained uh, funds that played role within the elections and these money now are available to affect the uh, negatively the coming elections. Uh, all of the good uh, uh, fronts probably c would not be capable or able to uh, face that uh, force w w the people with the uh, money uh, ill earned but now what we tell you, trying to say to the people if uh, to the people we tell them if someone will come to buy your vote take the money but fo vote for someone else that's the only way to go around that just have a comment about the election law it does not really uh, the recently passed law does not uh, support the uh, uh, greater and bigger France coalition uh, gonna uh, they are uh, if they want to go into the coming elections so the new law would serve the middle size kind of fronts and uh, coalitions so uh, we don't have any kind of animosity now among the list. Uh, I want to answer the question about the women's electoral list. We need to have a woman that would win elections out of the list, the electoral list. It's not impossible, but kind of hard at this time. Also, we would like to see a list under the name uh, head, uh, of a woman that want to head that list. It's, this is kind of this is kind of hard at this time. We try to prove ourselves by being uh, like number four and within the political list, which uh, especially among those people with long history in the political work, but to have a list just strictly of women we um, from the practical side it does not serve us very well even if you go to europe and other countries you don't see this kind of list have there's no quota even uh, there are a lot of politicians female politicians who have interest in the political work they go and work within a political party and they play the role we think that we are doing the same and uh, doing the role we playing the role we're supposed to play within the political uh, action. Question to Mr. Shabander. You referred to that uh, there was a mistake on the accountability uh, on the, uh, applying the law of accountability. 
uh, and the, especially I had a questions about the uh, uh, the deputy, the Sunni deputy to the Maliki, whether it has a part of that or related anyway to that law. I have four uh, like images about the Iraqi like uh, government, the Sustani electricity, and then. Uh, the heroic acts of Al Ahmed Al Maliki and uh, Mahmoud Al Mashhadani, the head of the parliament. I have a question. If Mr. Shabander or Ms. Nada had the opportunity to become a prime minister, okay, for, uh, w what kind of uh, a state and how, how would they work to achieve that kind of goals they have in mind? To answer the first part of your question, Accountability and fairness, it was uh, kind of uh, uh, the, the law was legally speaking was wrong. As I, as I said, it was just put in a goal to eradicate Bathist. Also, when they applied the law, they had a lot of problems and discrepancies. So there were some criminals uh, who were not really uh, 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 dealt with. So uh, there were a lot of Bathies, with a, of high-level Bathies, were one of the best people, uh, and they got that rank within the uh, Bath Party because of their position and their uh, uh, job uh, within the government. Uh, your question is very important. The eradication uh, went the wrong way, not because of the Shia, also the Islamic party, and which is Sunni, was the most enthusiastic uh, party to create and activate that law. So the law was not Shiite kind of law, it was a political mistake and sin, I would say, committed by all. Shahrastani is the one who had uh, this uh, power or electricity problem. I never dreamed to become a prime minister, and I'm not working in that direction, but I say we need a forgiving uh, and uh, reconciling prime minister. That's what we need for our society. We need a man capable of making peace and uh, confidence among people and trust. We think that Shia and Sunni need to come together in the coming period to choose a prime minister who is capable of giving peace and trust to people, not to create crisis or to lengthen the crisis. We wish for Iraq that because Iraq deserve this. I'm quite uh, convinced, and I know I'm not going to be a, a prime minister because I'm a, a female, which is. But if I had the opportunity, I would say I would work uh, to build a civil state and everybody keep his or her sect away from the state. If I live in Iraq, I will start today in, file, in a, a system, uh, uh, a very serious and uh, system uh, to, uh, to go after uh, terrorism and eradicate corruption, because corruption is the one who uh, the one who brought uh, 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 terrorism and everything to us? Because uh, if you want to build a civil uh, state, uh, you need to fight corruption forcefully. And uh, our uh, here's all I'll do. I'll give our guests a, a chance to give closing remarks, and then we'll have the opportunity in time for you to come down and ask your questions uh, here. And uh, in, in closing, um, I want to see if you have any closing um, uh, observations that you want to share with us, and if you have any specific advice for the next term of the parliament that uh, will be elected uh, in the April elections. Mm. 
نشكركم مرة أخرى. I would like to thank you again, and uh, I like I would like to convey uh, also your voices. In fact, all the problems we faced in politics and with, uh, whether we talk about shortage of services or security, it is also uh, it represents a, a real battle in Iraq, which is uh, the battle uh, between Iraq and terrorism. And we would like uh, here to ask our friends in the United States to stand by Iraq. Iraq will enter this battle on behalf of everyone. So uh, this is it. Uh, so this is it. Iraq will go into this battle on behalf of everyone. Hence, everyone has to stand by Iraq. Uh, uh, some uh, what uh, you may hear here uh, as Americans from uh, Iraqi leaders, they uh, be uh, to warn uh, uh, the United States to provide more weapons uh, that be because the weapons may be used uh, politically. I hope they don't. You don't uh, hear uh, or don't hear to this uh, because this is a national battle, and there is no reason um, uh, that uh, will make make the commander-in-chief to use their weapons against his people, and he, he did not use, uh, he didn't that, did that in the past, and if he tried, even tried, he will, uh, he will fail. Um, so that will be uh, uh, the, the end of his, uh, his post. So, so let's put all our uh, uh, disagreements aside. And uh, Mr. Ah uh, Sheikh Ahmed Abrisha, here I remember him. We you all we met Ahmed Abrisha. Uh, he is one of the leaders at uh, the sit-in square. Why? Why he be, he is a leader? Because he's talking about legitimate uh, requests for his uh, people. But when um, and and they became captives uh, to the uh, ISIS. Um, he and, uh, and the witness whiteness. He said, "Let's postpone our demands because we have now a, a, a priority, another priority, which is fighting terrorism in Amba. This is a role model we should follow. This is a role model that uh, to everyone else, uh, to the other political leaders, that if you have a disagreement with Malik or other somebody else, to drop uh, the the major battle." Um, and I, I, I see this coming. And uh, I have a comment about the uh, Iraqi position towards Syria. It is um, unjust to call on Iraq that they are, we are supporting the Syrian regime. This is, n this is not happening. And I, I believe that the, the new Iraq suffered from the Syrian regime uh, uh, unprecedentedly. And those terrorists who are now in Syria or trained in Syria, they, they are targeting Iraq and the independence of Iraq under the pretext that they are fighting the occupation. But uh, when there is uh, weapons uh, and a train and uh, going inside Iraq, then they don't differentiate between uh, terrorists and the Iraqi citizens. And uh, uh, so there is a vision uh, of Iraq uh, or Iraq's vision towards Syria and the that the solution in Syria is not a military solution. And we and I swear here that Iraq actually uh, did not vote when it uh, voting on uh, arming the opposition. Because we said if we uh, armed the opposition, and, and it, uh, even to the level to the Syrian uh, regime army, what do you expect the results of that? Uh, they will kill each other. And no party will settle any scores. Uh, so, uh, and here, what are we seeing uh, what happening in Syria? So, what is the solution in Iraq's vision? And uh, where others l uh, looked at this solution as uh, to be a faraway solution. And Iraq, until t today, we can intervene in the uh, Syrians um, and uh, more than even Russia or more even to Iran.
to find a solution. Uh, Iraq, and take the, those words from me, that we can convince Bashar Assad to conduct a fair elections under absolute international observation and to, pour, to also, um, uh, we need um, uh, and we look into the Lebanese experience, they killed each other, but at the end they couldn't exclude any one of them. Uh, today we have two or three parties that are, uh, are fighting against each other in Syria, and in the future we cannot say that we can exclude any of them. Uh, so Bashar Assad will not accept to 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 uh, certain uh, conditions and Bashar Assad also cannot put conditions on the opposition certain so the, so what is the only solution here to witness free elections under international observation and if if their election will bring Bashar so and 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 yes so that's that's what I'm uh, and then when you look at the Amal movement or Lebanon experience uh, experiment, so the uh, the solution and that uh, and that could be imposed by Iraq on Bashar, and I am confident about what I'm saying that this man is ready to run into real elections under international observation, nothing to do with the Iraq Syrian government, and look, witness to the outcome at, of these elections. And thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank you all, um, and I would th thank you for your patience uh, hearing us. And I think that the United States can play a role in, in the future in something very important, especially the Iraqi elections. Uh, when you look into the strategic frame agreement, uh, and, uh, where the United States has to support democracy, um, in Iraq, in terms of providing um, um, advices and uh, observations, um, also in other spheres, uh, in building the institutions and establishments in Iraq, and this is um, may, uh, very important to bring this American experience, especially when it comes to combat corruption, combating terrorism. We need this American experience in these fields. Uh, I mean, when it comes to arming the the army, um, there's nobody who will um, disagree uh, about that, but what uh, we are missing is uh, the institutions um, uh, in, in, in different directions, again, combating corruption, combating terrorism, uh, providing uh, transparent elections. Uh, stimulate people to participate in the elections. The United States and many other uh, organizations can bring advice to us uh, about that. So I believe today that you, you standing with Iraq is is very important to, to bring Iraq out of this uh, s struggle. And of course, we are with a peaceful solution in Syria and um, and uh, that we witness elections in Syria, so we are with a political solution, not with um, um, a military solution, but when we, uh, at the same token, also we, we talk about the importance of uh, accountability and justice and, and to imp and to be uh, uh, honesty in dealing with each other and with the different segments with this uh, we're, uh, actually we're especially with the people who suffered in Iraq and thank you very much I would like to thank you again yeah, welcome Mike. thank you all for staying with us this afternoon thank you appreciate it so ladies and gentlemen let me also add my thanks to all of you who have participated in this who have asked good questions I uh, want to thank the deputy prime minister who is en route to the capitol hill we want to thank uh, both uh, dr jabori and mr shandambar for his and Sh um, sarhang for your moderating great job thank you for the interpreter up there did a great job thank you all very much for coming thank you